Good afternoon, everyone. Today we celebrate the vigil of the fourth Sunday of Lent. And just a little reminder that Jefferson Parish requires everyone attending church at this time as we continue to wear a mask and facial covering to curb the spread of viruses. And everyone's asked to please comply with the mandate. There are two special collections this weekend for Catholic relief services and one for the Easter altar decorations. Please use the specially marked envelopes for these collections and we thank you for your generosity. Also, we continue to remind everyone to please turn off all electrical devices. This Mass is being offered to all of us and our families and especially for Carmen J. Lago de Cividon, Ernest Harvey, Ernest G. Jelke, Robert Bridgewater, Warren Perrin, Marilyn and Joe Allard, Jack Kalata, Dan Stack, James Swallow Sr., Lorraine Mary Legler, Judge Patrick Schott, Mary Ross Darridge, Sean Patrick Linden, William Graham, Jimmy Lemaire, Richard Vanderbrook, Jerry Hawkins, Louis Gilbert Lafleur, Georgia Cobana, George B. Jurgens IV, Henry J. Studline III, Suzanne Boudreau, Carlos Gutierrez, the intentions of Matthew Eastley, special family intentions, and the intentions for Mark Capel and William Curtis Baker. Just a little continued reminder that if everyone would like to mark your handle for where our mass setting begins, it does begin at number 316 in the red gather handle. That's the Sanchus, the Mystery of Babe 316A, the Amen 316B, and the very familiar Agnus Day in Latin, also number 320. So again, to mark your handle for our little mass setting, number 316. And our gathering home can be found in the red gathering home 407, number 407. Again, we keep this solemn fast. Let us all rise as we lift up our voices to the Lord.
mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word re reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that we from devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of this people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens of Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. According to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. I actually don't think I look that good in pink, but anyway. I heard Father Tien say at the beginning of Mass that we wear rose today as a sign that we're moving along in the season of Lent. And uh, this is called Laetare uh, Sunday, which is from the Latin word rejoice. 
And actually, the entrance antiphon, we have a song today, but the entrance antiphon for this Mass says, Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Rejoice, all who were in mourning. Because Jerusalem had collapsed by various different uh, attacks against the city. And so this was uh, foretelling the rebuilding of Jerusalem. So the word rejoice, Leitari, is why we actually wear a rose. Well, you know, we've been celebrating the year of the Eucharist, which began uh, in January of this year. And each month we have, we're devoting one weekend a month to a particular element of either the Mass or a particular part of the understanding, the Eucharist, the sacrament of the Eucharist. And today, as Father Tien just said, the Archbishop has asked us to focus on two of the very early parts of the Mass, the penitential rite and the Gloria. And the first thing to say is that we're doing this in Lent when we don't sing the Gloria or recite the Gloria because we don't do that in Advent or in Lent because that is more of a song of rejoicing and in Lent it's more an Advent, it's more of a penitential season. But I'd like to share the story with you because I think it really illustrates what the penitential rite and the Gloria are all about. So a man died prematurely in his 50s and he found himself before St. Peter at the pearly gates of heaven. The man said to St. Peter, I wasn't really ready to die, but now that I see this place, I want to come in. Not so fast, said St. Peter. You need 100 points in order to get into heaven. The man said, what? I never heard that in my religion class or in any of the homilies. St. Peter said, well, they can't cover everything. You do need 100 points to enter here, so please give an account of your life. The man said, well, I was married for 35 years, and I was the father of four children. I was faithful to my wife, loving, hardworking, sacrificial to my family. In fact, I can't even begin to list all the sacrifices I made in family life. I accompanied my children to every activity and every event. I just was a devoted and sacrificial family man. Wonderful, said St. Peter. According to the chart, being a faithful family man for all those years is worth 15 points. And so you only need 85 more points to get into heaven. The man jolted a little bit and he said, oh, well, I didn't mention anything about my faith life. I'm a lifelong practicing Catholic, a regular at Sunday mass. I prayed faithfully every day, at least some short prayer. I raised my children in the faith. I helped out at many church events. I belonged to several different organizations of the church. And if the priests ever needed help, I was always there to help. Very impressive, St. Peter said. Your life of faith and serving in the church are worth another 15 points. And you now have a total of 30 points and you only need 70 more to get into heaven. The man broke out into a sweat. And he said to St. Peter, give me a pen and some paper. And the man then proceeded to write down every good deed he could ever remember doing in his life, from sharing toys as a child, to cutting the grass of a neighbor who was sick when he was a teenager, to helping his elderly parents in their old age, to hurricane cleanup, and to donations to countless charities. He filled up many pages of the tablet with a list of his good deeds and handed it to St. Peter. St. Peter took one look at it and said, this is amazing. Please give me a few moments to tally all this up. St. Peter spent some time flipping through all the pages and then he said to him, I, I have seldom seen a man like you. The total of all these works of your lifetime are worth an astonishing 20 points. And so you now have 50 points in all and you only need 50 more points to get into heaven. The man was speechless and regaining himself, he replied, well, you don't understand. That's all I have. That's all there is. There's nothing more. Please let me in. Sorry, I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. You need 100 points to get into heaven. No exceptions. Distraught, the man fell to his knees and began beating his breast. And with his head bowed, he said, O oh Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
And then with a guttural sound coming from the depths of his being, he said, I plead the love and mercy of God. And St. Peter said, the love and mercy of God? Why, would you know that's the number one point getter on the list? And it's worth more than 50 points, a lot more. And he said, bingo, you can come into heaven. And with that, the man stood up and began praising and glorifying God at the top of his lungs. The gates of heaven opened up, they flew open, and the man entered heaven rejoicing, lay tare. I really like that parable. It's very, very instructive. It says some important things about our faith. The first one is that we don't earn heaven, although we oftentimes think we do and think we have a ledger card and we're earning points. St. Paul says in the second reading today that we were saved by grace, that it was a gift of God, nothing we did. Jesus earned it for us on the cross. It is by our good works that we thank God for that gift and that we cooperate with God's gift. And we can't reject that gift if we don't live properly, but good deeds don't earn us the right to get into heaven. And the second thing is that the actions of the man in that story or parable actually parallel exactly what we do at Mass. In the Mass, as we mentioned last month, as the priests and ministers process up the aisle in the entrance procession, they represent all of us symbolically leaving earth for an hour to enter the altar space and experience the glory of heaven. And after we begin the sign of the cross to start the Mass, Acknowledging that God is a trinity and that we're saved by the cross. And after the words of greeting, we move immediately into what we call the penitential rite, the rite of penance. And in that rite, we confess that we are sinners. We admit that our sin is real. It is offensive to God. We need to be saved from it. And we can't save ourselves. And we call upon the mercy of God. And mercy means the saving grace of God. We either pray, Lord, have mercy, or sometimes, as today, we sing Kyrie eleison in Greek, which means, Lord, have mercy, or we confess the confidior, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am a sinner. And when we do that, we strike our breast like the tax collector in the temple who was repentant, admitting he was a sinner, because we are sinners in thoughts, words, deeds, and omissions. And God responds to our confession of sin and prayer with mercy. He pours out his mercy upon us and he outright forgives us for minor, minor or venial sins in the penitential rite. Minor venial sins are forgiven. And so we hear the priest say, may almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. It's only the big sins the mortal sins that require us to go to confession, to receive absolution. And then, having confessed our sins as a community and having received God's mercy, we sing out, except in Lent and Advent, <laughs> we sing out in praise and glory of God with the Gloria. We sing the words that the angels sang to the shepherds when they came to announce that Jesus Christ the Savior of the world, was born in Bethlehem. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people of goodwill. In the Gloria, we proclaim the greatness of God, we worship God's majesty, and we acknowledge that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and saves us. In the Mass, we do exactly what the man in the story did. We move toward the pearly gates of heaven. We reflect about our life and our failings. We confess our sins. We cry out for mercy. And then receiving that mercy, we give praise and glory to God. In, in truth, the penitential rite and the gloria go by very quickly in the mass. It's just a matter of minutes. And because they are formulary prayers and repetitive prayers and ritualistic in format, 
they can easily become routine and they can lose their luster and meaning. But the church is giving us an opportunity in the penitential rite to say, Lord, I really am a sinner. I really do need your mercy. And in particular, my sins of today are all that happens in just some moments of silence. And then may Almighty God forgive us our sins. And when we hear those words, then we just can't help but be overjoyed and grateful. And we really sing out to God in the Gloria. And to recapture the importance of these two parts of the Mass and how they are based in Scripture, the, the penitent at the temple, have mercy on me, a sinner. The angels to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest, right out of Scripture, right out of the pages of our faith and salvation story. When we hear Jesus say in today's Gospel that he is going to climb up on that cross the way that Moses raised a bronze serpent in the desert and God forgave the people's terrible sins hundreds of years before Jesus was born, that he will be lifted up on that cross and our sins will be forgiven. So Jesus is reminding us one more time that our sins need to be forgiven. And isn't it wonderful that that happens every time we come to Mass? And that's why we confess our sins at the beginning of Mass and the potential right penitential right, and then in gratitude for the wondrous gift of God, give honor and glory to our Creator. So today on Laetare Sunday, or Rejoice Sunday, let us thank God for this opportunity to at least once a week confess our sins, to receive forgiveness, and to be able to glorify God as an entire community of faith as we continue on our journey to heaven. In this year of the Eucharist, may we experience the penitential rite and the Gloria at Mass with renewed appreciation and fervor. Amen. Now let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men are salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was the name of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified of the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and ascended at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the love and mercy of God, let us bring our prayer and petition to God. May our prayers, sacrifices, and acts of charity during the season of Lent lead to our personal spiritual transformation. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For spiritual conversion in our nation and for the preservation of religious liberties, we pray to the Lord. Amen. In this year of the Eucharist and St. Joseph, may we grow in appreciation and desire for the Holy Eucharist and in imitation of the faithfulness and charity of St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For Pope, Pope Francis' prayer intention for the month of March, that we may experience the sacrament of reconciliation with renewed depth and taste the infinite mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For God's blessing and healing of all victims of clergy sexual abuse and for healing in our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who are sick, for God's healing grace, 
and for our deceased loved ones, and for all the recently deceased, especially Joseph Vindel. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We now pause to add our own intentions in silence. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Please join in saying our prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus and our family prayer. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, carrying every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders of nations and give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus. For you are our loving and healing Lord, our Lady of Prom Succor. St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our Mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom, that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette de Lille, pray for us that we may be a holy family. We now say our Novena Prayer for the intercession of St. Joseph. Our Novena Prayer started this past Wednesday and will continue to the end of this week, culminating in the Feast of St. Joseph, which is Friday. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God, entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Let us all sing together song number 39 in the red gathering of gold, number 39, Be Merciful, O Lord.
Praise my brother and sister that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully reveal them and present them to you as a feeding for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their heart, that free from disorder of affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world, as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end. We of In a similar way, when suppers was entered, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Spirit in Christ, 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostle and Lord's models, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on early help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pure and church honor with your servant Francis our Pope Gregory our Bishop, the order of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have made for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brother and sister, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life. Give kind of wisdom to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, for that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe for all this grace, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of the peace of Christ.
We have a few announcements. We now expand the seating for our Everton Chapel from four seats to six seats. So now we, we can have a maximum of six people at, at any open time for our Everton Chapel. So now when you come to the chapel, we can have a maximum of six people in the chapel. 
Last Wednesday, March 10, our parish were joining with all the parishes in the Archdiocese of New Orleans to the confession from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. feature. This Wednesday, March 17, and the following Wednesday, March 24, we will continue to join with the Diocese for confession from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. You can go to any church throughout the whole Archdiocese of New Orleans to get a confession at between 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. this Wednesday and the following Wednesday. This Friday, March 19, and this Saturday, March 28, we will have St. Joseph Altar for public viewing with temperature checking, social distancing, and mask wear requirement. On Friday, we will also have 1,500 spaghetti dinner to go for lunch from between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please come by any time on this Friday to visit St. Joseph Altar and especially at the lunch time to receive the very dinner to go. And if you would like to make any donation for the altar, please use the envelope in the field and make a donation for the altar. On Friday, March 26, our main club will host a crawfish boy to go. We please see the time and detail available in the bulletin and also come to support them. Beginning on March 38th, we will have a parish-wide book reading on the life of St. Joseph. This reading will end with a prayer of consecration for St. Joseph on May 1st. Please see book of Father Joe Collins in the bulletin this weekend about uh, this and consider to join with this reading a uh, group about uh, St. Joseph's life. This Palm Sunday will be only two weeks from now. We will need a stable form for this Palm Sunday. If you have any stable form and want to donate them, please call to the office and then drop them in front of the Arizona Chapel on this Saturday, March 28. Holy Week will be only two weeks from now on, and last year as we did have a chance to celebrate the Holy Week because of COVID. Please uh, make time to come to the Holy Week in this, uh, this year. The schedule for the Holy Week will post on the website. Please uh, look at the schedule and uh, make time to come to all the celebrations of this Holy Week. It will be on March 28th until April 4th. We have a lot of things for the Holy Week. Please mark on your calendar to come to this Holy Week. And uh, this Easter Sunday, we will have uh, an extra Mass at 6.30 a.m. Uh, beside the Mass at May 10 Calendar. And uh, we will not have even Mass for Easter Sunday. In this Easter, we will also have an Easter flower memorial for the diseased loved one because the only $10 per plan. Please uh, write the name of the loved one in the envelope and uh, use the envelope and the field if you want to buy the Easter flower memorial for the diseased loved one. And uh, lastly, as we have very successful with the, crop, uh, with the fish fry last night, thank you so much for all the AC for having the time to cook, cut the fish and uh, make a fish also, and especially to the daughter of Isabella who's selling the uh, uh, brownie, and then um, and also all the parishioners to come to support the fish farm. Please come back in the next uh, Friday for the uh, uh, profits from the main club also. And after this mass, the daughter of Isabella also sell the brownie. This is our brownie who was you have from uh, last night. Please buy the brownie if you didn't change to buy the brownie last night, and I support them. Please stand for the final prayer and the blessing. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder who is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God reveal him with humbly pray, and do thou so bring to the heavenly host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, who proud about the world, seeking the rules of souls. Amen. And as we go forth, 
Let us all sing together number 399. Number 399 in the red gathered Jerusalem, my destiny. 